So here's a journal selection selection checklist I would like to share with everyone. Uh, so first off, you can look at the journal metrics uh, when you're choosing your journal. You can check the impact factor of the journal if that's not available. Uh, you can get other metrics like SJR. This is the Simago journal uh, and country rank. Uh, you can check the visibility of the journal, which means uh, what databases is the journal indexed in. Uh, that can be Web of Science, PubMed, and Scopus, for example. Uh, you can check the journal type, open access, subscription, or hybrid, uh, and you can find that information on the journal's website. Uh, check the publication time and frequency, how many issues are published each year, and how long does it take for the journal to make a review decision. Uh, most journals will actually advertise uh, those statistics online, uh, usually in the form of from uh, days from submission to first decision or from submission to final decision. Um, you know, journals are actually competing for your papers, and uh, we typically share that type of information with potential authors. So, and and we, you know, we like to advertise that, oh, we, we can make, uh, we handle your manuscripts very quickly, and we can make decisions uh, in a short period of time. Uh, what constitutes a short period of time? Usually uh, you know, four to six weeks for an average journal. Uh, you can also look at the journal selectivity. What is the acceptance rate of the journal? That's not always possible to find, uh, but some of the journal selection tools will help you uncover that information. And finally, what is the peer review process at the journal? Uh, is it single blind uh, where the authors don't know who the reviewers are? That's the typical standard uh, peer review. Or is the journal, uh, does it run a double blind peer review? Uh, double blind is when the author's names are hidden from the reviewers. And uh, this, method of peer review is thought to be uh, 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 more fair and, and less biased because uh, uh, some reviewers will uh, be hesitant to reject a paper from a big name author or they might reject a paper if they haven't heard of the authors so uh, if the author's names are omitted uh, from the paper uh, that may result in a more fair uh, peer review and finally there is um, <clears throat> open peer review and this is uh, where the reviewers' names are known to the authors and the authors' names are known to the reviewers. And actually, the reviewers' names are published on uh, the, the front page of the uh, final published paper, uh, along with the editors' names and the authors' names. Uh, a lot of the Frontiers family of journals, a lot of journals in the Frontiers family, uh, actually opts for the open peer review. And finally, uh, there's author costs. Uh, so be sure to know what all the costs are. Is there open access charges? Are there additional charges for color figures or page charges? And uh, finally, before you submit to a journal, check what the pre-submission formatting requirements are. Uh, and uh, this can usually be downloaded as a PDF or displayed on the journal's homepage. So where can you find all this information? Consult the journal's website. Uh, all these statements uh, should be able to be found on the journal's website. You can read what the aims and scope is, uh, what the aims and scope are, uh, who are the editorial board members. Hopefully you've heard of many of them. Uh, is they, are, they should be well-respected members uh, in your field of study. Um, be sure to check the instructions for authors, the types of papers published. That's the article type. Uh, which will also tell you the uh, word limits and other criteria, like the number of tables and figures that you're allowed to upload, uh, you're allowed to publish with the paper. And then any formatting requirements, style preferences, uh, the time to publication, and finally, author fees. So look at the details. Uh, another uh, important uh, item to consider is the copyright. Uh, does the journal require transfer of copyright? Uh, does the journal refuse supplementary data? Uh, does the journal require authors to share materials like patient data or DNA samples? Um, you know, most of the molecular journals want you to share uh, your GenBank uh, accession numbers. Uh, there's a lot of data that, you know, that they want you to make public or at least publicly accessible. Uh, does the journal restrict the number of authors? Usually no, but uh, if you do have multiple first authors or multiple co-corresponding authors, uh, you should check that out before you submit your paper. And finally, check to see if there's any extra charges, like uh, 
open access fees, use of color uh, for color figure charges or uh, for printed pages charges. And here's some final tips for targeting the right journal. If you're in doubt of, of selecting the right journal or not, you can always email the editor as a pre-submission inquiry. And when you do this, uh, make sure you have your abstract ready and uh, write a short cover letter uh, telling the editor what the paper is about, uh, what is novel about your work, uh, what is the significance of it, why is your work important, and why is it a good match for the journal. Uh, some editors will reply, uh, others will not. Usually we try to reply to all the authors. Uh, and uh, remember, if you're encouraged to submit your paper, this does not guarantee the paper will get accepted or even reviewed by that journal. 